adventure bike riding is fantastic. Ride around in nature and get all these experiences. But for me it's not complete unless you also camp in the wild. So if you're thinking about starting camping off your motorcycle, um, this guide is for you. So I have a system luckily for that, that I'm going to show you, not necess necessarily what to buy exactly, but how to think when you put things together. So I'm going to unpack now and show you what I've got and um, some hints. In the Nomad camping system, we have the different categories and this is the health and hygiene. Let's start your camping adventure with the most important part as made famous by Rambo, you know, his survival tool that he made famous all over the world. No, not the knife. Wet wipes. Uh, I mean, how else would he get from this to this? Of course, wet wipes. Um, I always have it with me. It's your little part of civilization that you can bring with you. Uh, if you're out in the woods and there's no lake or anything that you can wash yourself in or anything, this is a good uh, adventure shower. You can wipe yourself off and be a little more fresh. You can use it for wiping the visor on, on your helmet if it dries in those insects and so on. If you have to do some work on, uh, on the bike and you get all filthy, you, it's easy to just clean off. And of course, if your stomach starts sounding like you pulled the DB killer, um, yeah, you know. Then of course, <laughs> bring normal to toilet paper. And the difference here uh, is this you can leave in the forest. So just make sure it doesn't show because this goes away in just a rainfall and then it's gone. The wet wipes, they don't decompose. It can take years. So you, can, you need to bring them with you and put them in the trash. And your friends appreciate if you put them on the fire, the, the little stained wet wipes or, um, around the cozy fire. That's, that's a given hit. And also bring your first aid kit. Uh, I hope you don't have to use it uh, because you crash so badly on the bike. Of course, this is good for that too. Um, I focus mine on stopping different kinds of bleedings uh, bigger uh, but mainly cuts because in the camping area that's where you're more likely to cut yourself you mess around with knives and axes and so so whatever and this a little accident can happen uh, so yeah think about that and i also bring my toiletries and of course in here we have the rally breakfast um, aspirins and uh, hydration powder and lastly a little uh, microfiber towel it's actually quite big this small one like that works great and dries in a second okay now let's have a look at the next category which is the wardrobe so the wardrobe is not much really uh, not counting your riding gear for, because I usually use my riding gear in camp but if I go on a longer trip it's good to have some civil clothes uh, and I have yeah small pack bags like this and I have uh, yeah new underwear a pair of normal pants things like that I have a warm um, hoodie in this case I can bring something more like a down jacket or something uh, in a dry bag and it's also very nice if you don't use it at night you can use it as a nice pillow uh, also really good for that pair of normal shoes just lightweight uh, easy packable shoes and then just things that you need to feel comfortable in camp, like uh, lederhosen and a beer glass, of course, always on every camp. And some extra dry bags is good, because when you have dirty laundry or whatever, you can 
put them in a dried bag. You can even wash your clothes in the dry bag. Put your dirty uh, clothes in here, some uh, washing powder and water seal off and just shake it like you mean it. Then you get to eat and just think ahead for the night. What do you want to eat and drink uh, in your camp? Um, and one of the most versatile and quick things to get is one of these gas burners because they are so small and they're very fast so you can, if you just want some coffee uh, on the road, you just bring it up and you have hot water in no time. And a lot of the food that you can buy is just add hot water and you eat. Turn up the gas, light it, Add some water in the bowl and voila, in about one minute we have boiling water. And if I just want a quick lunch, I get one of these and just, yeah, you open it a little bit, pour in the hot water and you're done. This was the first thing I got and then of course you want to go cozy camping. And in Sweden, you have all these shelters and everything with uh, the fireplaces already made. So of course you can go around, gather some firewood and make a real fire when you have time. That's what you do in the evening. But this is good for on the road, for the morning coffee and things like that. So yeah, I think this is a must have. Okay, so to expand from that, um, it's good to have something to eat with. A simple spork. Uh, need that to, to eat stuff, of course. If you want to be a little bit more civilized, I bring a plate. So this is all the stuff I have now. I don't bring everything all the time, but just to show you where to go. And if you're in camp and you make a fire, that's, uh, I guess, what you want to do. So then you need ways to make fire, not a problem. You gather firewood, make a fire, and then you can bring some stuff. I like my favorite to bring is my little uh, skillet. Uh, folds neatly and you can cook nice stuff on it. These uh, small bottles I bought from uh, just, it's, it's for traveling. Uh, if you go by airplane, you can buy small, small bottles like this to put in your luggage that uh, have a small enough quantity so they won't take it from you. So this is good to have. I have um, some washing for, for dishwashing detergent and some oil for cooking. And that's also good if you want to uh, grease the rim if you have a flat tire or something like that. Coffee grinder and a little filter that you can put on the mug. Also something, this is all optional, a mug some spices. If I tend to bring these things, does not take any space to put them in a bowl like this and put a lid on it. So it looks big and bulky, but if you use it for storing stuff, it's, it's not much. So this you can put on the fire and, and do some cooking. Yeah, and of course, a little knife is always good to have, both for eating, cutting meat and, and doing things uh, around camp. Uh, I used to have the cool uh, green camo or whatever, the cool looking knives, and then you drop it and I never found it again. <laughs> so whenever I can choose something colorful, uh, I do that because it's easy to see where you put it. So that's a good tip also. So a little knife is good. And when you're gathering firewood, um, you may find dead logs and stuff like that, that you can uh, make fire out of, uh, out of. And then it's good to have some, something bigger than this knife um, to, to cut pieces up and stuff like that. And for that, you can have a little saw and saw up stuff. Uh, it's good if you also, if there's something over the road or whatever, uh, you can have that with you. 
And also you have these really nice outdoor axes, these small axes that are very versatile in camp. Uh, I saw Thomas Hansen had one of those in his video. And uh, yeah, Thomas. Yes? Can I borrow your axe? Well, of course you can. Thanks, mate. Yeah, so, so one of these, you get it back. So it's really nice to uh, have this around camp to make uh, small uh, tinder bits and, and you can carve with it. I even seen them uh, cook with it and everything. So it's really nice little axe to have. Uh, and it fits quite well in the, in the luggage also. If you don't want to carry a lot of water, this little thing is very handy. Um, it's a filter so that you can drink from pretty much any water source. Um, screw the cap off, fill it. This is half a liter, you get all the different sizes. But there's a really uh, good filter here that takes away bacteria, viruses and uh, a lot of bad stuff. Um, screw it on, drink directly from it or use it to squeeze out uh, into your water bladder or your coffee, water or whatever. So if you don't want to bring a lot and you have access to water through, uh, on a, through a stream or a lake or whatever, these are really handy uh, to use. And last but not least, the last category, your living quarters. I have everything for the living quarters in this 30 liter bag. So let's do that. Night time is a very dark time for me. It's dark for everyone, you idiot. So I wear, I, I've, it's good to bring a headlamp into camp because if you're over 40, you need to go up in the middle of the night and take a leak. Uh, <laughs> that's the way it is. So headlamp is really good. And you can also put it as a, a ceiling lamp in the tent if you want. Okay, so we have tent or hammock. That's uh, two different preferences. Some have both, but I'm a tent guy because I like to uh, yeah, crawl into my little home. It's uh, also very windproof and, and so on. Um, and I can have put all my stuff in there if I'm not in the tent and so on. Hammock is the, without competition, the most comfortable sleeping um, arrangement that you can have. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's just a different thing. And I'm a tent guy, not better than hammock, but, but uh, yeah, um, hammocks, you get the wind, of course, and so on. But waking up in the morning with a nice view in a hammock, that's unbeatable. So in the tent, we need a sleeping bag. This one is quite cheap. This is my summer um, uh, sleeping bag, goes down to plus five, so that's okay. Quite cheap thing. I don't spend a lot of money on my stuff. Uh, uh, this is about 40 euros, a little less. This tent was uh, 130 euros. But where I spent my man money was on the sleeping pad. I will show you that. So I will not do the tent trick today <laughs> because I will show you uh, what I like about this tent. Because when it comes to tents, it's, um, you have different types of tents. You have the tipi tent, you have the tunnel tent, and like this one, this is the dome tent, which is quite easy. The actual tent, or yeah, and the poles, and the tarp. So let's put up this tent quickly. Mm -hmm. 
So this is, of, yeah, uh, you have some uh, spikes to put in the ground, just to put it out like this. And if it's raining, I'm more careful with that to make it all around so it, the water comes outside. But the best part, the best part with the dome tent is that you can take it with one hand and just put it somewhere else. I want to have it here or here, like that. And now for the sleeping mat. This is the most expensive thing of all the things here. Not by much, I think it was uh, also uh, 130 uh, euros. But this has awesome insulation. It, you, it's uh, graded for down to minus 25 degrees and it's nine centimeters thick. And If uh, in a tent, your sleeping comfort besides temperature is uh, the mat. So if you buy a th one of those thin, thin ones, you may be a Tarzan and wants to sleep on the ground. But I want a thick mat. And the reason I want it thick is uh, because I don't want to keep it inflated thick, but if it's thicker, then I can uh, deflate it to the level where I'm floating and it's very soft and, and follows the, um, my curves. Um, it's the th CPR uh, method, uh, like this. Yeah, you delete. So, that's all we need. We don't need it hard pumped because it's thick, as mentioned. So, like so. Yeah, so we're pretty much done. And with this tent, I can promise you, since it's so fast, you will be the first one to open the beer because the other ones are still putting their stuff together and hanging their hammocks and trying to get in them. And the third category that encapsulates everything is the luggage, of course. I have the living quarters, the kitchen and the wardrobe, plus the hygiene stuff. Um, these, this is my maximum package uh, or, or luxury <laughs> volume, uh, three times 30 liters. And if it doesn't fit in here, I don't bring it. Uh, so this is maximum uh, what I take with me at, at any time. I, I like to have soft luggage or semi-soft, but uh, I stay away from hard lug luggage because of, yeah, I like to go off-road and stuff and it's easy to uh, get stuck with your legs and stuff. These move a bit and uh, if you fall they don't bend or lose the waterproofness. So now the system is complete and whenever you see this symbol you know what it stands for. Real wild camping. Now let's do the thing we always do. Make sure there is not a single trace that we've been here. Yeah so that was my attempt to get you started on motorcycle camping, what you need and so on. And most of it is luxury. And uh, so, so I hope you can see what the essentials are. And when you start uh, packing for the first time, usually you go way too big. You bring sofas and inflatables and whatever, but it's actually good to do that and then take away. That's a, that's a real zen moment right there when you, each thing that you take away, it's, uh, you realize that I can live my life here on the road without that stuff and without that one and without that. So you don't need much. Okay, so let's hit the road again. And if you haven't seen the video ADV like a Swede, 
which does, which does not focus on camping, but the adventure riding in Sweden. How to do that, how the road system is working and what you can and what you cannot do and a lot of other interesting things. Take a look at that video and see you in the next one. Bye bye.